So I've been receiving a number of questions recently about my composition process, specifically when writing music for films and television series. I actually have a very simple two-part method that I use, and it really helps me personally to not only write music that I feel is both interesting and well-produced for a film or series, but it allows me to deliver cues that at this point in my career have proven to have a higher probability of being approved by the creative team that I'm working with. It's a very, very simple process. This is gonna be a quick video where I'll share with you how how this method has helped me to write and produce music more effectively, and I'm hoping that by sharing the information, it's gonna help you think about your own writing process and look for ways to make improvements. That's what this channel is all about. It's about always improving as a musician and a music producer and a composer. So let's dive in as I break down my composing process into these two simple steps. The first thing that I'm gonna do is when I sit down to write a scene, a personal piece of music, or even to mix and produce a track that someone else wrote, I'm gonna make a choice to strictly focus my attention in one of two categories. The first category we're gonna talk about is pure free-flowing creativity. When I choose to focus my attention here, I'm making a conscious decision to just follow my instincts, go with the flow, and just do whatever comes naturally and feels right with the scene. It's worth pointing out that when I was much, much younger, this part of the process was really excruciating because the truth is you really have to build and nurture your instincts as an artist over time. During this part of the process, there are no bad ideas. That's my rule. Just little threads, little breadcrumbs that I'm sort of setting down and I'm trying to follow and see where they lead me. So if I begin to develop something and my gut tells me to keep going, then I'm going to. It's important to note that I'm not just referring to writing notes on a page during this process. The creativity I'm talking about, it refers to the musical notes, the decision to manipulate a sound with distortion, delay, or whatever plugin you enjoy. It's all of that. And you just keep creating until you reach the scene conclusion or the tracks conclusion and the piece just sort of feels like it works and it feels done in my experience this is typically the point where many up-and-coming composers believe that the cue actually is done but for me personally I found that that's one of the biggest distinctions between composers with less experience and those who have been doing it for a number of years successfully. The cue is not actually done because what we have to do is the next step in the process, which is the exact opposite of everything that I just told you about. Instead of focusing our mind creatively and experimentally, what we're going to do is strictly focus our attention on the technical details. Instead of thinking like a writer, now I'm saying to think like an editor. So the first part of the process, very creative, very free, there's no rules. But the second part of the process, it's purely analytical and you're actually kind of leaning on rules that you know have worked in the past and things that you are specifically looking for to sort of rein in your ideas. And so what I'm doing here is I'm actually looking for things that I can take out so that my intention as a writer and musician is more clear or I'm looking to sonically layer things so that again, same idea that the main concept of the music is bolder and more well-defined. I might layer a drum hit to make the downbeats hit harder, or maybe I'll double the string melody with a horn or the piano melody with a bell. I'm just sort of looking for ways so that the music has collectively a more emotional and focused impact to the listener or to the project. A really important thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times during that first creative process, it's really easy to allow a cool idea to become distracting to a scene or a piece of music. It's actually my personal approach and taste in music to not have as many notes playing as possible or to make something sound as sophisticated or complicated as possible because truthfully those approaches don't commonly play very well when writing for film and TV. Instead, I'm usually focused on how to make the musical statement clear and laser sharp while working with dialogue and sound effects, and that's what this analytical part of the process is all about. Let me give you an example of this. Here's a piece of music I just wrote for a project. This is how it used to sound.
I wrote this late at night, wrapped up around maybe like one or two in the morning, and I was feeling happy with the vibe. I thought it worked with the scene overall, but the next day I came back to it with what I call fresh ears. I've taken a couple hours away, maybe an entire day, or just got a good night's sleep, and then I listen for areas that I can edit. Things that I can either add or take away so that again, my intention is more clear. Now, if I open up version two, take a listen to the same section, but the final version. The first thing that you can hear I did was I cut out the pizzicato part in the beginning because it was feeling really repetitive. Instead, I decided to fade that in at this sort of halfway point because doing so brought in this new sense of pacing and it makes things arc and feel more interesting as the piece develops as a whole. I also doubled the melody with two extra elements. One is a bell tone that is split left and right and the other is a vocal which is actually, it's me singing, but it's just pitch shifted up an octave so it sounds really strange and I thought it kind of blended nicely to make the melody more prominent while adding some sort of unique flavor to the track. That's what I mean by cutting things out or adding layers to embolden an idea. This is really how I approach every single piece of music that I write. I start with the attitude that there is no bad ideas. Just try and write from a purely creative, non-judgmental place. And doing that will often lead me to do things musically that sound really cool at the time, but in the big scheme of things, this part of the process alone doesn't give the project everything it needs. I need that second half of the process of saying, okay, now I need to take all these ideas and motifs or melodies or signature sounds, and I need to focus them to be clear so that they're concise and they can best serve the application that this music is meant to be a part of. Just remember though, there's no right or wrong way to create music. This is just a process that's worked for me personally. It's just something that has really helped me over the years to create a lot of music more quickly because I'm not trying to do both processes at the same time. If you feel that this is something that a musician or another composer you know may benefit from, please go ahead and share the video. Also, if you could please like and subscribe to the channel, it allows me to keep creating free content just like this. If you haven't already seen, I also have a really cool educational website that I've made called Modern Media Composer Composer.com. Sign up there to receive a free virtual instrument that I created and I've used on tons of top films and TV series. It's called Tension Pads and I'm giving it out so that it can inspire composers to use non-traditional elements in their scores. If you sign up for that, you'll also receive access to free content about being a modern composer in today's film and television industry. I am truly grateful to everybody that has been watching these videos. It's become a really fun thing to be able to share the information with all of you. Please check out the other videos on this channel if you haven't already. If you're interested in music composing for film and television or music production, I'm trying to make them as useful and as beneficial as possible to you. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope this has been helpful.